Like I said, I'm Alex Andrews. I'm the Director of Volunteer Engagement and a co-presenter. Stacey Brake is here. She's our Director of Health and Wellness, and she's going to go ahead and get started um, with the first few slides, and then um, we're going to open up at the end for you guys to ask us questions. So thank you again for taking time tonight. We don't think we're going to be too long, so we'll dive right in. Okay, hi, thank you for being here, you guys, and thanks for working on this project. Um, for those of you that are going to be doing the online health assessments, earlier in the year we created, we took, if you're familiar with Nine Health Fair or if you've participated in it before at Regis, you know that we do multiple um, optional screenings as well as basic screenings at the health fair. So since we weren't offering these, um, Fairs this year, and we, and then in addition to that, we developed a partnership with the Area Agency on Aging down in the Lower Arkansas Valley, and we were working with older adults down there, providing education to keep them active and keep them healthy, and try to keep them engaged in their health, especially around diabetes. So we created, we took some of the screenings that we do at the health fair, and we turn them around to make them participant facing so that they could do them on the website. And um, we're hoping to continue this with other area agencies on aging throughout the state, as well as creating some possibly some new screeners. So we took our diabetes, the cardiac risk. Well, you can, you can see that there. I'm not going to read that to you. So the diabetes risk assessment is basically, um, oh, Alex, did you share the link of where these are? Um, I them. did share the, the Be Healthy page for the Lower Arkansas Valley. I shared that roughly a week ago with you guys. Is okay. That, yeah. Okay. You can also find them, um, if you don't have that link to the Be Healthy page, you can just find them easily as well by going to ninehealthfair.org and um, I believe it's preventative screenings. Um, I'll have to look that up and you'll see the list of them. So the diabetes risk assessment is basically the one through the American Diabetes Association. It's just tailored to um, Nine Health Fair. So they just go through and they, and you'll see when you go to the assessment page, there's education and there's information about the screener. Then they click on a button to go to that assessment. They take it. And then there's information for them to either share those results with their healthcare provider or to, we have a program called Nine Health Neighbors and they can reach out to the nine health neighbors, which are medical professionals, their MDs, PAs, NPs, and RNs that can also help answer questions regarding their results. So you'll see that the cardiac risk assessment is one that leaves our site and it actually takes them to the Mayo Clinic and asks them to enter some numbers if they know, that, know it about their risk for developing heart disease. The sleep apnea is is quite a lot of information. The stress management goes to um, a couple, uh, a depression screening and an anxiety screener. And then the nutrition assessment is one that really needs some help. And then there's also a page for Ask a Health Professional where they again can reach out to one of our Nine Health neighbors and um, there's some prompts there for things that they may want to talk to the health professional about. So with this, I think on the next page, Alex, um, I believe this is what you guys are going to be doing. You're going to review the screening, the screeners, and then um, develop and test protocols for individual use at home. So play with these and we, our feelings will not be hurt at all if you have a whole bunch of recommendations and updates and best practices to use around these. Um, so you look at it from a participant as well as a, um, you know, medical professional such as yourselves. And then if you have ideas about additional protocols that we could use or practitioners could use if they're live with a participant or a patient, um, I think that possibly in the spring, you guys might, Regis may entertain the idea of doing a health fair online. So maybe um, this could be used in that sense. 
Some ideas that I've heard people talk about that would be great for some additional screeners would be perhaps um, a fall or a balance screener pro or screener. You know, we have the body and balance as part of nine health fair, but it's pretty hard. You need a, a physical therapist or physical therapy assistant to do that. So I don't know. Well, I'm pretty sure there is fall assessments out there and perhaps one could be developed around that, especially with the older population and polypharmacy and things like that. So that's an option. Like I said, that nutrition one really needs some help. And then um, maybe a smoking cessation or perhaps a marijuana overuse screener. Those are just some ideas for you guys to play with if, if you come across anything and you're interested in that. So I think that's, I went through that pretty fast, but um, are there any questions, clarifications? Dorothy, I have one question. Do you have anything on vaping? And do you feel like this is really just geared toward the elderly that maybe vaping wouldn't be applicable for this? You know, um, I think vaping could absolutely be applicable because we may be able to use that in addition, like that, that could be separate than what we're using maybe for the agency um, on aging. But I would actually be curious if in the rural areas, if older, and by older, the, they define it, the area on aging, especially in the lower Arkansas, they define, define it by 50 and older. So we, there may be some people that are vaping around that age. So I think that would totally be a good one to look at. Okay, thanks. Uh -huh. I'm not dead set on it, it was just a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Any other questions? And like I said, we, our feelings will not be hurt if you're like, these need lots of help. So have fun with it, dig in. Okay, I guess I, sorry, I feel like I've asked you a lot of questions, Stacy. So um, the thought process is that we'll maybe find a topic that we would think that would be really applicable. One of these that you mentioned, or maybe we think of something else. And then is it working together, like as teams on here, or is it doing it individually, or do you not care? Or what, what are you thinking? Alex, you might know because you've had um, more conversations with, uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna yeah. pass that off to Alex. Okay. Sure, in some of the discussions that I've had with a couple of you know, Regis faculty, um, they definitely thought it was beneficial for students to work with each other. If that doesn't work for whatever reasons, because there's you know, restrictions, we don't know how, if you guys are together or doing everything remote for classes. So you guys could set up Zoom um, calls and one act as a provider and the other act as a patient and see how it goes and give each other feedback. That might be really useful. Um, but it could also be really useful to test it on somebody that hasn't seen the screenings yet. You know, it's just a lay person. So if you've got a friend or a family member, so this is really flexible. Um, and we, you know, it might be really beneficial for us and, and, you know, hopefully for you guys too, um, to be able to have that experience with a lay person. And then of course with each other, because you're all going through medical school together. So, um, approaching it from a couple different levels would probably be, um, to, to our benefit if you guys could make that happen. Did that help? Yeah, that totally helps. And then as far as next steps go, it, like I was just reading through um, the information, it sounds like you may want to be meeting with us in the future or... or. Yes, some of the <laughs> guidelines that were laid out for us um, by the Regis faculty when we, you know, decided to do this, it was like a once a month, let's just, you know, stay in touch with each other. Um, so, you know, for obviously for the screening stuff, Stacy is medical, so you're going to want to talk to her and get her feedback. Um, but then there's another portion that I'll talk about, um, that you can touch base with me about. So it was, it was a monthly cadence is what we were talking about. And Alex, they can, you can share my email address and phone number with them. Sure. If they have questions in the meantime. Yeah, I've got both our email addresses at okay. the end of this. Um, so you guys will see it there. And this is recording, so we can share the recording at the end. 
Um, and then, you know, when, when I reply, I'm going to send you guys a separate email with the recording and I'll, I'll copy Stacy on that too. So then we're just all in touch and you can reach out to either one of us. And if, if we're, if I'm not the right person, then I'll, you know, pitch it off to Stacy and, and vice versa, you know, we'll get it worked out. You can reach out to either one of us. And I think the idea was for you guys to go through all the screeners that we have already mm -hmm, and, things. um, you know, give us your, your feedback on those. And then if you have time or if it's, if you're able to perhaps come up either as a group or individually of, of additional screeners, which there may not be any, but there may be some. So that's just, that would just be a bonus to the project, I think, if you're able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. And as you guys know, Regis always does an amazing fair. So I think that was, like Stacy already mentioned, that was the hope is that as, as much as we can replicate in a virtual model, um, and some of the ideas when I was talking to faculty, it, some of the stuff we do by phone. So Stacy already mentioned Nine Health Neighbors, and we left it at really low tech because, you know, we have an older population that comes to the fairs. Um, so if there's a screening that can be done by phone, great. If there's another screening that you would want to do in this kind of model and this modality where it's like, you know, people face to face sharing and they can actually show their body, they can show, you know, hey, here's this spot on my skin or something like that. Um, I know the faculty that I talked to at Regis were like that, that's a possibility for us too, you know, if it, if we can share something by video. So think about that too. Any more questions? So logistically, I guess, would it be like more helpful for each of us individually to look through all the screeners and like have feedback for all of those? Or would it be better to have this? I know we kind of talk about a group, but that way we could, um, you know, your diaries aren't getting like, you know, six different emails with six different recommendations on all the screening tools or maybe like to break them up in groups if, if that would be easier somehow or? What do you think, Stacey? Yeah, probably. I think if you maybe, um, maybe group feedback, because I venture to guess you guys will probably have very similar thoughts as you go through them. If you go through them individually, you'll probably compile very similar thoughts and feedback. So that, um, but I think honestly, whatever works best for you guys. We'll take it. We'll take whatever you'll give us because we're just so happy that you're able to do this and willing to do it. Um, yeah, yeah, we're flexible. So if you guys enjoy working in pairs and you think that, you know, opens up kind of your stream of thought. Um, yeah. Yeah, or split them up. Maybe a couple people do the diabetes, a couple people do the sleep apnea. Um, and then you could certainly do it that way. Yeah, we're very flexible. So like for some of you, you may have, you know, a wildly different schedule and you would struggle to meet with a group, you know, and, and in that case, then, then just do the assessments and give us your feedback on your own. But if you can pair up by, you know, what Stacy said, that makes sense, Stacy, the group feedback and stuff. So you guys um, are free to decide how it works best for you. Did that help? Yeah, I think so. Maybe like we could, like the students could all email. Maybe like, I think it might be good to maybe split them up. Kind of like you were saying that it seemed a lot of us would probably have similar recommendations. Um, that way we can like, like three of us work on, or you know, however it works out. But that way we're not all just getting the same recommendations on the same screening tools would be my thought. But I don't know if any other students on the call have different thoughts. I would agree. I think I'd rather um, like two to three people working on a, a one or two of the assessments just to have somebody that you can bounce ideas off of. But um, yeah, I would agree with that. I like that idea. Like, for example, that cardiac risk assessment, like I said, it takes you to the Mayo Clinic. And ideally, we want people to stay on our website. So, um, but that one, unfortunately, we don't 
have anything developed for that. So we had to send them to that, to that website. I don't know if there's anything that would that this might be time consuming to be able to create something similar to the other ones once you guys get in there and see it and they can just create a score themselves and see if they're at risk instead of leaving the website and plugging in information um so that's just kind of another idea to think about on that one Otherwise, that one you guys may not have a lot of feedback because it's the Mayo Clinic, but we could certainly take feedback on the education and stuff that's on the main page before they leave it to go to the Mayo Clinic. Do you guys have and other questions? Just to, oh. just to clarify, is everyone in this group, are we all in the family nurse practitioner program? Because I think there's like two cohorts. We don't know the names of everybody. So I know some people are in my class, but I don't know if everyone's in. Are we all family nurse practitioner students? Alex, do you know? Um, you know, as far as I know, I didn't know if he was asking the other students. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> <That's okay>. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's what was communicated to me that you guys were all nurse practitioner students. So I believe so. There's one gal that, you know, got pulled into work tonight that's not on this, but other than that, I believe um, there were six. I'm here. That was oh, me. fantastic. I got released from work. I was on okay. call and I got sent home. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad you made it. Um, so I, I think there's six of you. So we could either do, you know, um, pairs, three pairs, or you could split into groups of three if you guys like that idea. And then split those six different screenings up, you know, amongst yourselves. It's nice. It's an even number. So we can, we can definitely talk about that offline. If you guys, you know, I, I think you guys would probably work it out and your pairs and how you guys want to group it. Um, but if there's more questions that you guys have on these particular boxes that Stacy kind of explained out she'll she'll be on the email when I reply to you guys I'll make sure to put the link one more time to the be healthy page that Stacy mentioned where all those six screenings live and then we'll both be on the email and then the next thing I'm going to talk about um, this is really not anything to do with your program other than it's health related and so I have to say a big huge thank you um, the faculty, you know, I kind of begged and pleaded and let them know we have a lot of new programming, as Stacy explained, for Nine Health as an organization, but we're not really getting um, the traction yet. It's new. Um, so the more um, people we have spreading the word about these different programs, the more likely we can test their effectiveness. Um, so that was the hope. And you guys aren't the only group of students that we're asking that of. There's quite a few others at CSU and CU Boulder. Um, that we're asking as well, just to help us spread the word. Um, so I'll explain really quickly what these are, um, but it, it's, I'm gonna send you what's called a Nine Health Media Messenger Toolkit. You can see that's listed at the bottom here. That toolkit is really gonna be the substance of, of what you can post. You guys don't, if you want to create any new language, totally fine, but it's really all there for you in the toolkit. The logos are links to our different products and services. Um, this is also a really good way for you guys to maybe get creative and think about other things that we're doing. So if you do come up with new screeners, you might see on some of these other services that we already offer, how they fit in and how they integrate. So it's just a nice way to learn kind of well-rounded of where Nine Healthcare is going and where we've been spending our time so this first one, this discovery kit here, and these are all linked, um, and I'll send you the PowerPoint slide in this recording so you'll have those. These links again are in that toolkit, so you'll find them a couple places. Um, but the discovery kit is really all those blood screenings that we typically offer at a Nine Health Fair. Um, they're all here in this discovery kit, plus um, a COVID-19 antibody testing, and people can go to a Quest PSC. So Quest Patient Service Center to get that blood draw done. Since we weren't having our affairs, Quest was um, quite kind and opened up their Quest Patient Service Centers to us. Um, so that's what our marketing team 
named that opportunity for, um, you know, for the public is the discovery kit. So basically go out and kind of discover your health and choose what blood screenings or colon cancer kit that as well. Well, actually that might not be on that one. I can't remember, but anyway. Um, so the discovery kit, we definitely want to push out to the community more. We do have uh, fall fairs going on. Um, so if people can spread the word about fall fairs, these um, at home kits and Stacy can definitely jump in here, um, but they're where you can um, test your blood from home, but it's pretty limited. Uh, what's on the at home kit again, Stacy? So they can do a glucose and cholesterol panel is one kit, uh, an A1C is the other one, and then um, the colo kit, the, the fit kit, mm -hmm. checking for, um, you know, blood in the stool. And the, the cholesterol is a lipid panel. And so it's a dry blood spot. They, they do it all at home. They poke their finger with all these instructions and then put it on a card, package it back up and mail it back into Quest and Quest is able to met, um, uh, get results from that. So same thing there. This is all just about messaging, but the, that at home kit, obviously you can see here that we're trying to give people flexibility to meet them where they're at. These are all, you know, come back to our blood screenings. Obviously our fairs typically had way more, but our fall fairs now are much more limited because we can't have as much contact between people and we can't have the crowds. So we're very focused on blood draw there. Um, so those first three um, all do that, but the at-home kits, like Stacy just explained, it's, it's, there's not nearly as many blood screenings that people can get from home but it's a nice offering right now since not everybody is comfortable leaving their home um, or not able to because they're in a, you know, a sensitive group. And then Stacey Arl also mentioned the Nine Health Neighbors and we have those medical volunteers that have so kindly agreed to volunteer their time. And uh, when we get calls into a specific voicemail box, we call one of those medical volunteers and they give our participants a call back to answer their medical questions within 24 hours. Um, so all these services, we're really just trying to spread the word to community members across the state. Um, and we were kind of thinking, you know, two times a month and it should be really quick for you guys. For some reason, if your program is requiring you to do more hours and spend more time, this is not the place where we really want you doing it. We would love you spend more time um, looking at the screeners that Stacy already explained, talking to each other, practicing with those. But if you really enjoy social media and you wanna get more hours here because you need it for your program, by all means, post more than two times a month and that's totally fine. Um, we do find that you know, our older population is quite keen on you know, seeing flyers out in the community and emails. They're not necessarily on social media a ton, but it's still, it's still one option um, to get the word out there. We still do a ton of social media ourselves, um, but we find that email campaigns are really, really helpful. Um, and then, so I will email you, you guys, this media messenger toolkit. And like I said, it's got our logos. It has all the sample language. It's got links to all these services. We have links in there to blog posts that we do. Um, so this one should be pretty simple and straightforward because you can just pull what we've already got um, in the mess messenger toolkit here. Do you guys have any questions about that? Okay. Well, you can see here on this um, very last slide, there's my information and Stacy's information. So you can reach out to us and I will email you um, with the recording of this and then that media messenger toolkit and a link to the Be Healthy page where those screeners are. So you guys should be set. Do you guys have other questions before we let you go? Get back to your own night. All right. I don't. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. We really appreciate you. We do. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.